Welcome there! Today we're gonna be making a floating dust particle system that goes well with the dust generator I released last time. So to get started with that, of course, we're going to be making this in geometry nodes because geometry nodes are insane. I love them. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna keep the cube and we're gonna drag this to the left. To the left is what I'm trying. And then set this to geometry node editor, hit new, and now we'll have a new geometry node input. And let me crank this a little bit to the left so we can still see that there we go and what we're going to do next is we're going to add shift a search i'm using blender 4.0 alpha by the way for now so i'm going to hit shift a and i'm going to search for let's say the mesh to volume there we go and now that we have a volume we can start disrooting points in that volume and that is what we need to get started with, the right points that we will be using as guiding systems for our particles. So shift A, search for our distribute points in volume. There we go, add that there. And now we'll already have a little bit of points. All right, so that is very nice. So how do we now control the particles so that they start moving, start floating around a little bit, like it appears that it is... Um, at least not standing still, right? Not hovering still in the air. So hit Shift A and search for a set position node and drag out the offset and set that to be a noise texture, right? And we're going to use the color for this and then hit Shift A and search for a vector math and let's add that in between there. Set it to subtract and just set this to 0.5, right? Then everything will be nice and centered again. And now with the noise texture, we can just do whatever we want. And I'm going to set this to 4D because then we can actually start animating this. And I'm going to crank the scale down a lot. Let's see how that goes. And I want a way higher st strength as well because this is now only moving in very tiny spaces. And I want it to, to move all over the place pretty much. So let's hit Shift A, search for our vector math once again. But set this to scale, right? And so now we can set the scale to like 5. And now when we cross the or move the w you can see that our points are moving nicely throughout that c all right and we can tweak a lot with this noise texture we can change the detail the roughness and it will all affect how your particles move in your little cube space all right so let's hit shift a and search for a color ramp as well and that's just gonna allow us to tweak it even more like if we want some very narrow or compact kind of dust and in other places have no dust at all, then we can just drag this closer to each other and we'll get exactly that. All right, so for now, I'm just going to set my W to a value of hashtag. There we go. And then frame divided by, let's say, 5,000 for now. All right, and if I play this system, we can see that our particles are starting to move. They're very slow now, so I may tweak this value to 1,000 maybe. All right, you can see them starting to float nicely in the scene. There we go. All right, this already looks a lot better. And maybe this is even too slow. So let's try like 400. All right, and so now they're actually nice and nicely floating in that space. And we can tweak the strength now, right? And if we up the strength, they're going to be moving a little bit faster right away as well. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, if we add a color ramp, you can see that for some reason, the particles are now moving left to top right. And that is because, well, we're using a black and white value as a vector now. So I'm actually going to get rid of that and just use it as it was all right this is better beautiful so now that they are already floating around a little bit nicely randomly we can add some objects that we want to have as actual dust particles all right so how do we do that well i'm not going to do it in geometry nodes because there will be an too much effort for what we're trying to achieve really so what i'm going to do instead is I'm going to add like three or four objects that are going to act as our dust particles. And they're going to be just small little objects, a bit stretched maybe, some stringy stuff in there as well. So if we now hit Shift A and we add a new, let's say this first one is just going to be a cube, right? So let's move this out a little bit. And in edit mode, scale this down, scale this down in the Z direction. Press Ctrl R, Alt Z, and just move this up a little bit and this Let's say this one a bit more to the right. There we go. Make it a little bit more random. But don't make it too detailed. Because this is going to be a particle system. And we want to keep this nice and low performance. 
or high performance is what I mean, I guess. Right, so something like this is already looking quite nice. Now in the top view, this does not look nice at all. So let's tweak that by just dragging stuff a bit closer and then making it a bit more random again. All right, something like this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, that looks quite random to me. All right, so don't worry about it looking looking like um, a low poly object because we're gonna be seeing this very close anyway. And if it comes or in the distance is what I mean, if it comes close, then it's going to be blurred out pretty much because we're we will have a different focus object, right? Somewhere in the distance, perhaps. It's not like I'm going to be seeing this object sharp right in front of the camera, right? That's not gonna be the case here. So this is the first one. I'm quite fine with that. And let's just duplicate this. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is just rotate it a little bit and move some of the points again. And just make sure that they don't really look like each other, right? Maybe this one is a little bit more compact, more rounded, less stretched, something like this. That's a nice particle. Beautiful. And this is number two. Right, and now we're going to be making some actual strings, right? Some kind of small, tiny hair fibers. So hit Shift A, and we can start with a curve or a mesh. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's just go with... I'm going to go with a mesh, actually, with a plane. And then in Edit Mode, press M and merge everything at center. And just so that this way I can control the amount of vertices a bit easier. And I'm just going to extrude this, make a nice shape of a piece of string, something like that. And then make sure that you do the same in top view. Make sure it's not all in the same line, so it's not 2D. Right? So move this a little bit there, perhaps, and uh, maybe this one a bit more to that side. There we go. Beautiful. And in Edit Mode, I'm going to duplicate this entire thing. And I'm just going to change the shape now, right? So let's say this goes up. There we go. This goes more down. And let's actually make a little loop. Why not? Right? It should, should not matter. It's organic stuff. Something like that. Nice. So let's move this a bit more to the right once again. There we go. And with Proportion Editing Tool, we can even select a vertex and rotate, right? And then rotate the entire mesh a little bit. Or the other direction, perhaps. You know, go nuts. There we go. And let's just duplicate a vertex. There we go. And extrude this in a little bit of a different pattern now as well. Right? Because we want to have some variation, even though we won't be seeing this very, very up close. But we want some kind of variation. So you can't tell that it is the same object that is being used. Right? So something like this. And let's move this out a little bit. There we go. And let's rotate this a little bit, perhaps. Something like that. All right, beautiful. Right, so let's uh, go and press Object Convert to Curve. All right, and now we can just go to the Curve Data Geometry and add a little round bevel. There we go. Something like, not too thick, something like this. And the resolution, well, we can get away with a resolution of low, 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 low. Like, really low. With four vertices, and if we shade it smooth, we can get away with a nice rounded kind of smooth shading, which is fine. So we want to try and get the least amount of vertices here because we're going to be using this as a particle system, which means we are going to work with a lot of objects, a lot of instances. So um, the lower we can keep this geometry, the better. All right, so I'm going to split all of this up now. Um, so in edit mode, press A, P, separate all the curves. There we go. Um, actually, we should select only the ones that we're going to be separating. There we go. There as well. Separate there. Now they are all their, their own object, right? So let's set their origins to be the right point. So in edit mode, select the point where you want your origin to be. Cursor to select it. Right mouse, origin to 3D cursor, right? And do this for the other models as well. Otherwise, your rotations and stuff are going to be a little bit off. All right, mouse, or it's the 3D cursor, right? So this is now fine. Let's name this string one, string two, and let's call this one string three, right? And then for those little dots, those points, I'm actually going to scale them down a little bit, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure to apply your scaling and stuff. Um, but first, I'm going to hit Shift S cursor to select it and then apply all transforms. Or usually when you apply 
your transforms, your origin is going to move someplace else. And I want this to stay in the same place. So before applying it, I will move my cursor to the origin. And then after we applied it, I can just right mouse that origin back to 3D cursor. So then the origin is back at the same place. Same for this one. Cursor to select it. Control A, all transforms, right mouse, origin, 3D cursor. There we go. Now let's just select all of it. M, new collection, dust particles. There we go. And now for our initial point system, we can just use an instance, right? Because we now have the points we need. We're moving it around. We just want our dust particles to be replacing those points, right? So hit shift A, search for an instance on points. And then we can drag the instance out. And this is going to be a collection info. There we go. Now the collection is dust particles. So just select the dust particles collection, separate the children and uh, reset the children as well and pick the instance, right? So now each of these particles is going to be a different one, right? So the, for the scale, I want this to be adjusted for every particle, right? Every particle has their own scale. So drag that out and we can hit, um, let's say random value. Right, by default, it's going to be a vector, and I don't want it to be a vector because a vector will apply to x, y, z um, individually, which means that it can become very flat or very stretched. And if we set this to be a float, then it's going to affect the entire x, y, z as a uniform scaling, pretty much. Right, so we can set the minimum to be like 0.1. And the maximum to be one, right? I don't want zero to be the minimum because I don't want any object with no skill at all. So let's set this to point two, and then search for a math node and add that in between to multiply, right? This is going to be our actual scale value, our entire dust particle scale setting. And if we want that to connect to our modifier, we can just connect this to a group input node, right? So let's hit Shift A, search for a group input. Oh group inputs there we go and connect a empty socket to that value and let's go to the group settings and name this dust scale All right and now here in our modifier we can just change this the way we want beautiful right so for the rotation i want this to be completely random in every axis right it should be random completely so let's just drag this out and let's locate um random value nodes right and for the rotation this is completely fine to be a random value of a vector right because the rotation doesn't really matter if it is going to be x y or a combination of both totally fine right so this value i want this to be a 360 option right so we can't work with the zero and one because that is not a full circle a full circle is going to be setting this to minus pi and I'm going to set the max to pi, right? You can just type in pi and it will enter the value. No one will remember the full the full numbers of pi, right? Maybe you can get to a few decimals, but all of them is going to be be quite hard. And I'm not sure if, if this is even going to, going to do that, but it's fine. Right, so now we have a random rotation that looks quite nice, right? So let's up the density, crank that baby up so we have more dust particles here. And I'm going to crank down the scale as well. So let's just crank the scale down in here beautiful right and i think our dust particle spots are too big so let's just go into edit mode and scale that down significantly this one as well right compared to the strings they just looked a little bit too big and this is a little bit better right so if you think there is too much string compared to the amount of particles like the actual dots and stuff then just add more of these dots to your collection we can simply duplicate them all right, and now we all will already have more of those dots in there. All right, so think about that. Um, so how many you have in your collection is going to be the distribution of that as well. All right, so let's just duplicate this one more time. And let's just scale this one down a little bit. And this one a little bit as well. And let's just scale this a bit in the X direction or rotate it. doesn't matter. Make it nice and beautiful. There we go. So now we have a little system already. All right, so let's actually just add a camera to see how that looks. So press number zero. This is our initial camera. I'm going to move this right in our dust system. Beautiful. Just like that. And I'm going to set my camera to be squared. There we go. And we can actually just set this to be our rendered view now. Right. So let's go to rendered view. I'm going to set this to cycles and GPU. Here we go. And let's add an environment HDRI texture in the world tab there. Environment texture open. 
And you can see this, but just locate on HDRI you have. Um, you can download it from polyhaven.com, I believe, for free, right? You can download a lot of them. And I'm going to do... It is called Peppermint Power Plants. I, for some reason, quite like the lighting in there. I use it more often. And go to the Render tab, Film, and just make the background transparent. There we go. Right, now for the particles, we will still need to add a material. Right, so let's locate our actual particles. In solid view, that's going to be a bit easier. Let's see, there they are. And we can now just select one of them. Go to Materials, hit New. Let's go to Rendered View so we can see how they look. And to the Shader tab there. Now, the principle B is the F, right? It is fine. It works fine. Um, we can just crank that roughness down, but we can also hit Shift A. And let's do an Add Shader, actually. And let's set that to be translucent. Beautiful. Right, so now it's going to be appearing that there's actually some light shining through that. Right, it's beautiful. Right, and we can even set the color of that to be a little bit darker if we don't want it to be that strong. But I quite like to have some kind of an intense kind of translucency there. Right mouse, shade smooth. And let's do that for all of these little dots. Right mouse, shade smooth. And select all of them. And then lastly, the material that you just added. Control L. A link material. So now they will all have that translucent material. Right? For the strings, we can do the same thing. We can actually just use the same material. Shift, Ctrl, L, a link materials. So now even our strings have a little translucency on it. Beautiful. Let's go back into our camera view. And this particle system is way too big still, in my opinion. So let's just crank that entire value down to about small values. So something like that. That looks a bit better already. And what I'm going to do as well now is hide our initial dust particles. There we go. And in my camera view, I'm going to set a depth of field. There we go. Look at that. That's already looking way better. And now for the distance, we can just crank this down. And let's say something like... I want some of these particles in the distance to be more in frame. So like that one. Not this one, because that is going to be looking low low poly, low detail, because it's too close to the camera with a too big of a size. All right, so this is a low poly system. Control B and draw a little box around your camera. That will make sure that we can only see what is happening into the camera. And we can just add a little dark plane. Shift A, mesh plane, R, Y, 90. Scale that up and make it a dark color like black, for example. Here we go. All right, so now crank up that roughness and we can even crank down the specular to make it a bit darker. There we go. That looks quite nice in my opinion, right? If we play this now, you can see we got some floating particles in front of our black screen. Amazing, right? So it's a bit too fast. So let's crank down the speed a little bit. M2, let's say frame divided by 200. No, we need more actually. 800. There we go. Now it's a little bit slower already. Maybe that's even too fast. 1400. Something like that. That looks a lot better. Right, so now we actually have some dust floating in front of the camera. Isn't that amazing already? Right, so if you want more... If you want to do more work here, feel free to do so, right? Make your objects more detailed if you need that. You, you just saw how I did it. So you can just bevel those corners or make it more um, higher poly if you want. But for now, I think this is perfect. This is all I need. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of a light in the back here. And the reason why is because I think it's going to look cool to have some light shining from the back of our object. So hit Shift A and let's search for lights. And let's do a spotlight maybe. And rotate that into the direction of your actual camera and the particles something like this and now in front view we can actually see how that looks right and let's make it a bit stronger if we set this to a thousand we may already be seeing the differences and if we go to the world settings and crank that strength down you can see that we are now getting the light from only this spotlight and for reassurance reasons let's delete our initial light as well there we go so now it is just that spotlight and we can crank down the spot size right the actual size of this cone there 
and up the blend mode a little bit. So now it's only going to be lighting up the particles there in the center. Right, isn't that fun? Right, and then we can even crank up the initial radius a little bit if we want. There we go. Set the strength to maybe even stronger, 5,000. Right, so there we go. And so let's crank down the spot size just a little bit more. Right, so now if we play this, our light is only going to be affecting the particles in this, well, in the spotlight pretty much. So if we play this, the lights will be more visible once they enter that little cone. And once they go out, they will become less visible. And that's actually a beautiful way to visualize some of this. Some of this dust coming in and out of our particle system. Right, so let's add some more values to our group input just so we can customize this later whenever we need that to be customized. Um, so the density of the disrupt points is something I want to have um, as an input for sure. So drag that there. This is going to be dust density. Density. That was not typed perfect at all. Density. There we go. And we can also crank or play around with the W value here. And um, so let's drag this out and set this to be math. And now our W, our animated W value is going to disappear. But what we can do is set this to multiply and set one value to be hashtag frame divided by 500. And then the other value is going to be our animation speed, our particle speed, right? Dust particle speed, pretty much. So if we play this, and let's play this in solid view for a sec. Uh, can we really see what's happening? Yeah, we can. So if you think this is too, too fast, we can just crank the particle speed down to like point three, point two. It's going to be moving slower and slower. The closer we get this to actual zero, right? So play around with that. It's a nice value to have for sure. So set this to point three for now, for example. And now something else I want to have in here is the actual noise texture. All right, so the strength of the noise, so how fast it's going to move. This is pretty much like the, the speed as well of the movement. Um, so we don't really need that. But what I do want is the skill of this noise texture. So drag that in there. Dust noise skill. There we go. All right, so if we crank this up, you will have smaller movements in place. So if we crank that skill up to like five, you can see that our dust is going to be moving more in that same area and it will never le really leave that area, right? So that's something you may want. Right, there's one more thing we can change now and that is the rotation of these particles. If we play this, you can see that they are all keeping the same rotation all the time, right? So it could be fun if we just change that so that they get a little bit of a random rotation over time as well. Now we already have a random value, so how do we tweak that? Well, we need to rotate this vector pretty much, the rotation direction. So hit Shift A, I search for a rotate vector or vector rotate and drag that in between, right? And now we have an axis, a center, doesn't really matter. All we need is the angle really. So if we change this, all the instances are going to be rotating as you can see, right? So we want this to happen over time, but also dependent on the noise texture, right? So that is a nice combination together with the noise texture that controls the position, right? So just drag this subtract into the angle. There we go. And hit shift A and search for a vector math once again. Swipe that in there and set it to scale as well. Now we need quite a large value because the angle, well, it is a degree, so it goes up to like 180 or 360, whatever. Um, and this is now an output that is pretty much between 0 and 1. So we need to crank this up by quite a lot to even see some of the changes, right? So let's try some different values. 27, do we see some rotation happening? We do see something happening, but not very, very, very visible. Maybe 40, right? So now we can actually see some really fast rotations and then sometimes slower rotations and that depends all on the noise texture as well. So I think this is a really, um, a really nice addition to just have in our scene, right? So the rotation and stuff will also now depends on the actual, um, just particle speed you give it, right? Higher speeds will rotate your instances faster as well. And that is a nice combination to have. So if we just crank down the speed, for example, to 0.25, right? Maybe we will have a nice, Kind of combination between rotation and speed i think it looks really nice right so that is pretty much it i'm rendering it out you'll see the results right now of what we created you also saw it in the beginning but here you go again and i hope you enjoyed it i hope you can combine it with the dust generator that i created previously and download link will be below by the way 
And if you did like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe, hit the little bell because I will be making more. And then I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.